I'm William Brandt of Power for All. Today, we're speaking with Aaron Leopold, Chief Executive Officer of the Africa Mini Grid Developers Association, also known as AMDA, which is working to build out reliable market information and policy guidance for governments on how to affordably and reliably build out Africa's future energy system. Thanks for joining us, Aaron. Thank you, Will. So uh, we're speaking to a, an audience that knows quite a bit about mini grids. Um, I'm sure they're interested in understanding why AMDA was created. Yeah, so um, AMDA was created, uh, or the idea for AMDA was created about two years ago at a World Bank SMAP meeting in Nairobi, where developers and donors were in the room saying, we want to do business together. The donors wanted to invest, and of course the mini-grid developers needed investment. But uh, at that time, uh, the donors were saying there are too few projects, and the developers were saying, we have great projects. Um, uh, but there was a mismatch in the financial expectations, in the type of financing that was available, and <clears throat> really there was a lack of clarity around what the mini-grids were really offering. They were saying, well, we can electrify a village. Well, at what service level, at what reliability, at what cost, how much of that needs to be grants, when can they res expect repayment? <clears throat> and the answer was different for every single site. Um, so there was no benchmark available. There was no baseline for which uh, either side could really work from in terms of uh, expectations of returns or on the developer side in terms of <clears throat> Um, building up an, an expectation of what their sector could deliver. And so the need for data transparency <clears throat> and just a lot more data uh, in order to create those benchmarks uh, was, was really seen as, as one of the key answers. And of course, in East Africa at the time, there was a lot of policy redesign happening. And the mini-grid uh, companies didn't, and in many cases still don't feel like they are really represented in the policy-making processes for their own sector. So that was a long answer, but uh, the short version is that AMDA was created because there are terrible issues in getting finance to where these these uh, these funds have, have said they want to spend their money. They're mm -hmm. unable to spend it. And the policymakers are kind of uh, designing policy in the dark many times. So it's a, I mean, if I can summarize, it's, it's, it's a trade association uh, of mini grid developers, private sector primarily. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> that's an important clarification that I, I should have made. So the, the membership requirement are that um, you have an existing site as a private sector developer. We're still sort of defining whether you need to be private sector or whether you need to be um, uh, profitable. And the idea is that the association is supposed to be uh, made up of developers who are looking to scale. Um, and the other requirements are around data sharing. You cannot be a member, an AMDA member, without sharing uh, a a list of about 40 different KPIs on quality of connection, on where your financing comes from, on reliability of the systems, etc. And you also have to be designing systems that are in line with national regulations because the purpose of AMDA is really to legitimize the mini grid sector as a, a integral part of the future energy system of Africa. And that means following regulations so that we are being seen as, as taking seriously and that we are automatically going to fit in the plans of the future. Got it. And so you talked about two uh, key audiences, um, investors slash funders as well as policymakers, mm. which I also would imagine include regulators. Um, what, what do you see as AMDA's main role vis-a-vis -vis those, those audiences? Yeah, so uh, I've or spoken more. Or partners, maybe. Not, not sure. Audiences, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, it's it's going to be both, depending on how receptive <laughs> the the counterpart is. But um, yeah, I've spoken a lot more about the the money side of things. So I'll start with the policy. Um, we have seventeen founding members, and we are rapidly looking to to grow uh, the. And membership. those founding members are in Tanzania and Kenya, right? Tanzania, Kenya, and Nigeria. Nigeria. Yep. Um, and we are rapidly looking to expand those numbers to A, get the baseline of, of our benchmarking data um, broadened out, but B, to be able to start working in more countries with more governments on policy and, and regulatory design and redesign. Um, 
We want to have members covering uh, all of Sub-Saharan Africa in three, three years' time, but by the end of this year, we're looking to have members in about 12 to 14 countries. We will have, hopefully, after our first round of fundraising is successfully completed, um, which we are working on now, um, we will have offices or at least staff in, in three to four countries within the next uh, nine months or so. And uh, those countries are going to be the three that I just mentioned, Tanzania, Kenya, Nigeria, um, probably Zambia, um, or potentially DRC or, or Mali. We're, we're talking with many different people from existing industry associations on how we can work together to, to maybe not require full-time staff, uh, but where we can really you know, be the, be the, um, the information source and, and the advocacy support for existing associations as well. Mm -hmm. And so on policy and, and, and finance, what, is that, what does that advocacy look like? Uh, what, are, what are those uh, goals that you're trying to achieve? Well, it's different for each country. If you look at Mali as an example, they've got 20 years of history and a really great group of, of, of developers there, and they probably won't need much, much assistance at all. Um, but then if you look at DRC, um, where we have some mini-grid operators um, functioning in, in large towns, uh, because even in those types of communities there's no electricity, um, <clears throat> and where the regulation isn't as, as clear-cut, um, you know, uh, it's, it's going to look very different in those two contexts. And in Nigeria, you know, they have very advanced, probably the best regulation for mini-grids on the books, but it hasn't really been implemented yet. And so there it's going to be more about monitoring implementation and, and holding uh, government and donors uh, to account on, on their commitments and, and to be transparent in, in their approvals, etc. So it will be inherently about building up the right environment for mini grids to, to grow. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, going to be different in each place and right. will require different skill sets from each of our advocates there. So the International Energy Agency has said that uh, up to 200,000 mini-grids are required uh, to potentially serve a, um, a customer base of, of more than 400 million people. That's a, those are huge numbers. So I'm curious, um, from AMDA's perspective, and given what you've already talked about, what does success look like for, for you in, in helping to achieve some of those uh, potential targets? Yeah, for us, um, you know, success is really providing the the foundational platform, the policy platform, and the market awareness and intelligence that's needed for financiers and decision makers um, to enable um, these companies to do their do their jobs. And at the moment, um, we're fighting uh, very hard for. Um, increases in finance, but also just to to unlock the already committed finance that has not been spent in the mini grid space. Um, over a billion U.S. dollars have been committed by various uh, donors and concessional lenders to the mini grid space, and only a small percentage, less than 10% of that, uh, has actually been been spent. So we have 900 million just waiting. Um, <clears throat> and I think success for us looks like um, a a very, very clear and not automated, but you know, very smooth process for getting that money out the door, either through uh, payments per connection or results-based financing, as it's called, or a, a pathway towards um, cost-reflective tariffs uh, in rural areas. So that may be um, subsidized uh, kilowatt hour prices, or that may be national plans for tariff harmonization uh, or cross-subsidization between utilities and, and mini-grid companies. And for those listening, rolling your eyes at, at that idea, um, you know, that's what we're all about is, is big thinking and, and big ideas and having complicated conversations. Um, you know, we were just at a, a meeting, Will, you and I are still together at, at that location, where we heard about a new idea coming up um, <clears throat> to really build out opportunities to, to create strategic partnerships between utilities, mini-grid companies, solar home system companies, where that, that subsidization process would be at the center of this partnership, to deliver better services, to expand services uh, at an affordable price. Well, 
neither the utility nor the solar home system companies nor the mini grid companies can do that on their own. Um, and, and they certainly can't do that universally. So it's fundamental that these types of changes and these types of plans are, are starting to form. Point of clarification, you talked about cross-subsidies and harmonization between uh, utilities and mini-grids. Yeah. Are mini-grids utilities? Ah, yes. Well, you've actually uh, made me, uh, you've, you've drawn me into a trap because I've been, I've been misnaming uh, my own sector for a while. At AMDA, we really want to, we really want to move away from calling the companies mini-grid companies. Mini-grids are the technologies. They're, they're the product that these companies are rolling out. What they really are is, is rural utilities. They are providing energy services. They are you know, installing poles and wires, just like a big utility. But they operate primarily in, in rural areas. And we are calling them decentralized utilities or rural utilities. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for that clarification. Sure. <laughs> um, and then so just go back to what you know, sort of success looks like. Um, what are the first steps to achieve that success, say, for the rest of 2018, early 2019? Well, um, you know, once we're fully operational, uh, which is the, the funding question internally, um, you know, the first couple of steps are, are really um, building out the, the data that we have already collected from our members and building up further data um, to create a, a transparent, publicly available platform that will be um, on our website and available through partners um, that, that really <clears throat> allows people to, to take the data that we already have collected, which is for over 100 sites, um, and, and to start playing with it. You know, what are the averages? What are the highs? What are the lows? Uh, you know, what, what type of difference does it make where you are um, within the African continent? You know, we have um, Nigeria, which is a vastly different market where different economies of scales are possible at different speeds than in East Africa, which is much less densely populated and uh, where distances uh, between markets are, are much greater. So, so we want people um, to start looking at this baseline that we're building and to start using it. And we are, we are talking already with, with a number of action research oriented organizations, uh, including research institutes, universities, other industry associations to figure out how we can collaborate on, on data gathering. And, and this is where we really see our, our first important movements as being. Great. And then since this is, uh, we're talking um, uh, about the broader ecosystem and this will be included in the MiniGrid Partnership uh, newsletter, um, can you talk a little bit about what AMDA's role is within the MiniGrid Partnership? Sure. So um, I am I'm on the steering committee of the, the Mini Grid Partnership, <clears throat> and um, I've been involved since its very beginnings when it was called the High Impact Opportunity, uh, when I worked for, for Practical Action. This was part of SE for All um, at the time. And um, it's, it's been interesting to see it evolve because uh, it's a multi-stakeholder multi group, which inherently makes it difficult to find one activity that everyone is happy with. Um, but I think right now the exciting thing is that um, the, the partnership wants to build a, a kind of a, a regular state of the market uh, assessment or report or activity of some kind. We're still defining it, but, but AMDA is, is really helping the partnership think through, you know, how it can add, how the partnership can add most value to these, these folks who want to be working more with mini grids, but haven't found their own way. So we think really providing this transparency on, on what the mini grid sector or the rural the utility sector can and can't do, uh, and, and at what cost, etc. cetera. Um, and the, the exciting thing is that AMDA's data is showing that it can do more than people expect at lower costs than people expect. And that we are seeing economies of scale cost reductions already, even though it's still such a small sector. So feeding this type of information and perspective of the developers uh, uh, into the mini grid partnership has been really fundamental because for so long, because there are so few mini grids, a lot of the conversation has been somehow theoretical. Uh, like you were saying, you know, the IEA predicts. Well, AMDA is all about let's let's let people predict, but here's what's really happening. Um, and I think that's that's the value that we're trying to bring in this this reminder of you know you know the people who have got the boots on the ground. 
It sounds very exciting, Aaron. Thanks for uh, uh, being available for this conversation. And for those who are interested in contacting AMDA or learning more about AMDA, their uh, website is africamda.org. Um, and we'll look forward to speaking with you again soon. Yes, thank you so much, William.